Hi folks, today we're going to be talking about the September Season Pass cards because I'm actually quite excited about these. I'm going to start this video by saying that you should start saving up Spotlight Caches already because you're going to be wanting a lot of these cards. I'm way more excited about this than I am for um, the uh, August Season Pass with, you know, Dakin and X-23 and all that because like Destroy Decks are already really good and Destroy Decks are going to be even better. But but this season is a lot more fun and exciting, which is appropriate because it's Loki themed. So Loki is the season pass card. I'm going to talk about him first because I think this is a card that a lot of people are going to be sleeping on. And you're going to hear it first from here, people. I'm going to hear it first from me. This card is a lot better than people think it is. This card is being slept on. So the actual card, it's a 3 energy, 4 power card, nothing special there, just standard stats. But it has an on reveal effect. Replace your hand with cards from your opponent's starting deck. Give them minus 1 cost. So you're gonna get a bunch of your opponent's cards, but you're gonna get them cheaper. I've played a lot of Hearthstone over the years, and there is a Hearthstone card that is a bit similar to this one. It is a card that's called Renounce Darkness. It is a Warlock card that makes you change class, you play it, you are no longer a Warlock. You're gonna change to a different class with a different hero power, and you're gonna get a bunch of random cards from that class that are gonna be costing one less. Two things about Renounce Darkness. Renounce Darkness is considered, number one, to be one of the most fun cards ever printed. Like, people love this card, because just the, just the randomness and the excitement and just coming up with new strategies on the fly, it's like, it's so fun. It's so fun for gameplay purposes. It's just a treat. Number two, it is considered one of the worst cards ever printed. Despite the cost reduction, here is the secret. Deck building matters. You don't just put random cards in your deck. You put cards into your deck that synergize with each other and are like good. You put the good cards in your deck. No one is putting Quake and Strong Guy and Crystal in their decks. They're putting good cards in their decks. So if you replace your cards with a bunch of random cards, you're going to get a lot of cards that are bad. And... <clears throat> Having a synergistic deck of cards that you have chosen and put into it because you have a game plan and a cohesive strategy, that is better than random cards that cost less. That's why Renounced Darkness was bad. But with Loki, you are not getting random cards. You are getting your opponent's cards. You are getting cards from someone else who has put together cards with a cohesive strategy and with a game plan in mind and good cards that synergize with each other. So now we're in a whole different ballgame and this is actually a lot more interesting. Getting good cards and getting them cost reduced. That is a way uh, juicier proposition. This effect is basically like not that far off from just being able to play Sarah on turn 3. Which, if you put it that way, if you play Sarah on turn 3, does that sound like a good card to you? Because it sounds like a pretty good card to me. Now, it is obviously like you have to change strategy mid-game to account for the new cards you get. But that's why this card is so strong. I'm gonna say that like, for example, for Conquest, uh, this is one of the best cards ever printed. You know why? Because Conquest needs one thing and one thing above all else, and that is consistency. You cannot play a deck that gets hard countered by certain other decks, because then your uh, Conquest run is over. Whatever you face, you have to be able to beat it. And Loki ensures that no matter what happens, you can never be hard countered. So Loki is not going to be a card that you play in every game. But he's gonna be in your back pocket, and if you face someone who has a deck that counters your deck, that's when you play Loki. And suddenly, you have the same tools that they have, but yours are cheaper. If you face someone where, like, your deck is already favored against their deck, then you don't even need to play Loki. Just keep him in your hand, don't need to play him, because you're gonna win anyway, because you're favored anyway. But in unfavored matchups, he can take an unfavored matchup and he can give you a chance to be able to win that game anyway. And that is like a really strong ability and I think people are underestimating him. So I don't really think that you're supposed to build your deck around him. I know you can. 
you can put like cards like the collector in your deck and then you play Loki and then you replace your hand and then you buff the collector a bunch. I know that you can do things like that, but I don't think that's... I think you're overthinking it if you're using Loki that way. Here's what I think. Here's my review of this card. This card, you can just slot it into basically any deck. You can take any deck, put Loki in there, that deck is going to be a bit better. That's how good I think this card is. It's like one of the biggest, like, sort of, like, generalist cards I've ever seen. This, this card is going to see so much play. It's going to see so much use. Uh, which is cool for a card like Loki, which is just a, such an iconic Marvel character at this point. This is a good card. If you don't think this is a good card, then I hope I've been able to change your mind with this little rant. Because, holy shit, this is a good card. Moving on, Alioth. This card is nuts! Five energy... 5 power, on reveal, destroy all enemy cards played here this turn, including unrevealed cards. What? So, say you're ahead in a lane. Now you're going into turn 6. Play Alioth in that lane. Your opponent can't retake it. Yeah, oh well, they can do some move stuff or whatever, but still. Say you play Daredevil on turn 2, so you get to see their turn 5 play. Turn 5, you see where they put all of their big power, dump down Alioth, you win the game. This card is insane. I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know if this card is gonna be printed looking like this, or if they're gonna nerf it or something along the way. Because this feels insanely strong. So the week where this comes out, Loki wants to see some pass card. This is going to be in spotlight caches. And this is going to be one of those weeks where it's like, oh, you're going to want this card. <laughs> you're going to want this card because Alioth is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Or you can just think that this is like a very likely nerf candidate and hold off on it because it's going to get nerfed anyway. Because th this card is going to get nerfed. This is way too strong. But it's good. Week after that, Ravana Renslayer. Now, this card is... I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who like to think this looks cool and stuff. And it, it does look cool. But this card is not like a generalist card. There's, this card is going to see play. There's going to be decks that feature this card. Uh, but it's not going to be the card the type of card that sees like a widespread use. But there are a card, couple of cards here that you want to cost reduce. Uh, cards that have very low power. You can use this with Arnim Zola. You can use this with Mystique. So getting those cards down. And you have cards like Serra that get them down even further. You can have some pretty interesting final turns. You can do some pretty interesting turn 6 plays. That your opponent is not going to be able to predict. That they're not going to be able to counter. Because they won't be able to see how you're going to spread out your lanes. And how you're going to spread out your power. It's a strong effect. But it only works on cards with very low power, like one power, zero power. So it's not something that you're going to be able to just put into any deck and make it work. If you don't like playing those types of decks, then you're probably not going to care much for this card, but definitely has some use. And finally, we have Mobius M. Mobius, and I love this card. I love this card. And it might not even be good, but I love it. Here's the deal, people. The most dangerous thing you can do in a collectible card game is cost reduction. So much of a card game's balance is just, you know, focused around cards costing what they are supposed to cost. Uh, that's how you balance your cards. Hulk has this amount of power because he has this cost. Iron Man has this amount of power because he has this cost. And being able to manipulate costs is how you can do unfair and nutty things. A great example of this would be a card like Mr. Negative, where you can just swap power and costs of all the cards in your deck, and if the stars align, you can have some pretty explosive turn 6 plays that your opponent just simply cannot counter. They cannot match it. So what balances a Mr. Negative deck is that it's inconsistent. But there are decks that can cost reduce that are very consistent. For example, like Sarah Control decks and most recently Kitty Bounce. Uh, cost reducing Kitty Pride, cost reducing a bunch of other already cheap cards like Hitmonkey. And this has become the strongest deck in the meta. You have previously you've had cards like uh, Wave and Death synergizing with each other. So they had to change how Wave works because cost reduction is dangerous. And that is why I love this card because... 
it is so important for the health of the game itself that a card like this exists. Because so long as a card like this exists, there are limits to how degenerate the meta can get. This card keeps the meta in check forever. If cost reduction becomes too rampant and too efficient, people are going to put this card in their decks and that cost reduction is no longer going to work. And then you have a meta where cost reduction is not rampant, Mobius is going to disappear. Then you're going to see some new weird cost reduction thing that's way too efficient and people are just going to put Mobius back in their decks. A card like this needs to exist in Marvel Snap. So I'm not even sure it's good, right? I'm not sure it's something you need in the short term. I'm not sure if you should be spending spotlight caches to get it. But just the fact that this card is getting printed is going to be very good for the long term health of Marvel Snap. And I'm just so happy to see that it exists. So here's my overall buy slash don't buy list. Loki, the season pass card, he is absolutely good enough to get the season pass for. Uh, he is going to be featured in decks for many years to come. He's going to be used in all over the place. He's so good. Alioth is completely busted. You can get Alioth if you want to climb to infinite in the short term. Just be prepared that this card is going to get nerfed along the way. Because it's way too good. Ravana Renslayer is going to be really strong in a couple of decks, but she's not going to be good in every deck. So if you like the idea of those decks where you can slot her in, then get her. If you don't like the playing those types of decks, then you can just skip her. Mobius is a card that I'm going to get because I love this card. Not everyone needs to get Mobius, but if enough people get Mobius, we're going to be in a state where the, the meta of this game is going to be healthy for a long time to come. I hope a lot of people get Mobius. I hope he exists in a lot of people's collections, even if they don't use him often. And that's it. Like, that's a, it's a really cool season. It's, it's not, like, as focused as August seasons. The August season is, like, just destroying this card, destroying this card, destroy, 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 discard, destroy. That's it. This is a lot more open-ended, and you have cards that can be slotted into a bunch of different sorts of decks here. Uh, but they're all fun. They're really fun cards. They're wacky, they're zany, and uh, they're good for the game. I love it. I love the design of this season. So yeah, yeah, that's that's my hype video. I'm hype about September season. Start saving spotlight caches for it because this is going to be a good one. So if you found this informative, uh, consider giving a like on the video. Consider subscribing. There's going to be more Marvel Snap content from this channel. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you again some other time for something completely different.